raped his own daughter and molested her? Oh, ew. Oh, yeah, she wrote a book called Hustled. Hustled. Ew. Ew. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because he's like all, uh, <laughs> they'll pay people like, what is it, like $10 million to, because they got any dirt on him, you know? Oh, did you? <laughs> That's interesting. Larry Flint used to, uh, run a comic strip and all his uh, things called Chester the Molester. Chester the which Molester? Made, which made fun of the people raping their kids. And that is so the creepy. The character Chester the Molester, right? I'm just, that's upsetting. But meanwhile, he's like raping his daughter. And, uh, and the cartoon, uh, cartoon guy who uh, did Chester the Molester. Mm -hmm. Guess what he was busted for? Hmm. Oh, just raping his daughter and other kids too, or whatever. You know? My God, did you ever see Bernie Sanders' twisted erotica porn crap he wrote in his late twenties? It was, it was basically like he's saying, "Why do we have rape fantasies against twelve-year-old girls being tied up?" And it was sort of like, "Oh, speak for yourself there. We might not be having that fantasy you're having there, Bernie Sanders." And they put it in Mother Jones as a sort of like, let's put this guy in his place. Because he was obviously a creepy little perv. And depending on how you read the ambiguity of his prose, he said, oh, it was just badly written uh, prose. But it, it kind of looks as if he's trying to deeply embed within the 1970s porn culture and pedophilia culture and say, well, what about is, society know? does this reflect? and trying to cause, but he literally said that women like to be raped and all kinds of like weird and creepy stuff where that, that was all I needed to like deal with my Bernie Sanders potential crush. I was like, okay, he's a cult leader. I get that. He's kind of cute. I get that. But I didn't know that. That's, that's interesting. I'm going to look Yeah, I'll send it to you. It's totally. And I can uh, destroy. Yeah. And anybody who's. And there's even more than I already did. It's Mother Jones, Bernie Sanders. Rape will probably get it for you. His uh, his 1972 essay on rape. Oh my god. Ugh. I can't even believe like MSNBC will let him on. Or they won't. A woman enjoys intercourse with her man as she fantasizes being raped by three men simultaneously. Bernie Sanders. <laughs> and like, I don't, even if he was getting paid $25 to write some smut, I still don't like it. I'm like, and, like, I'm all for smut, but that's just not my kind of smut. Like, I'm all for sexual empowerment or sex positivity or whatever, but that's not it. That's gross. Oh, me too. And I'm not like, oh, my God, Chloe Daly is a dirty smut. I learned she sold S&M bags, but, you know. <laughs> that's uh, hilarious. She sold S&M magazines, Chloe U. Daly. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, all kinds of smut bags. And, like I said, rape man comics. And she had a neo-Nazi speaking. Ask, I'm gonna ask. He's not. He's more like a shitster, Jim Goad, you know. Jim Goad, yeah. Kind of like started to lean a lot more to the right. Yeah, he's he's so now in, a part of the whatever the white utopians or what are they? What do they call them? Well, actually, oh, he's right. like a. He's kind of like a nihilistic misanthrope that hates everyone and. And lives in Atlanta. But he actually isn't like a white supremacist and all this other crap either. But he was using the N word. He's kind of like a to white about write about white trash. I remember now. Yeah. He's kind of like a just crazy white boy, lower class dude that's uh, always just been like fuck you and like he had a mag he had I have a. I have a couple of his books, and I have uh, his magazine, um, Answer Me, that he used to do with the, oh, yeah. who had the, the rape issue and all that. There was all kinds of different research stuff from all kinds of different people. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, he um, wrote, like, uh, in Answer Me, you know, like, pro-suicide things with his uh, wife, Debbie. Debbie Goad and, um, 
He like, just wrote all kinds of stuff. Like, like right to die or supportive of it? Oh no, like people should fucking kill themselves. They're worthless pieces of shit. Blah blah blah. blah or oh, whatever. Yeah. You know? I think suicide's a great option for getting off this miserable planet, and more people should do it. And it's like shit like that, you know? Yeah. It's totally like stuff that he knew get like total action on all kinds of people. Yeah, like shock rocker trying to say the most inflammatory thing just because That's pretty much what he is. He's like he likes to shake the trees and see what kind of low hanging fruit will fall off and everything else in between from the top to the bottom. Well he's sure ugly I actually like it. You can go on YouTube and just put in Jim Goat and go listen to what he's got to say. A lot of it is a interesting guy. G O A D. He does almost the same thing like every interview nowadays. So. He's, yeah, he's not my type. I don't think so. The article was painful enough to try to get through that. I love it how Wizard Lambert. You should a chance and like at least go like hear what he's actually talking yeah. about. Because. The Willamette Week is a piece of crap fucking... But they out Chloe you daily for not being PC enough to have screened him 20 years ago? You know that, right? Alan Rosenblum's husband owns the Willamette Week. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Alan Rosenbaum's husband inciting race war with his propaganda paper as Alan Rosenbaum sold cases. And launches DOJ investigations on uh, people that use Black Lives Matter hashtags and shit. I mean, it's such a scam around here. You know, you know though, that article on public <laughs> records that Steve Doohan links to this morning on his uh, Lost at Sea article about Ted Wheeler, it really was more insightful and more modern and contemporaneous the way it needed to be for Oregon's typical backwardness that they would actually start to discuss issues of open records and open meetings and public records law and why those records were founded, how they used to work, how now the fees are getting in the way or being used to stymie the whole process or stymie transparency. My, my suggestion on Twitter this morning, which I wonder if it's the Rosenbaum connection that they would even have the insight to write a decent article in, in, in that accord about the police protest tactics stuff. But I was saying online, well, why not fund transparency? If you have money for pepper spray, you have money for bullets. Why not have money for photocopies if the journalists need something? Don't tie the journalists up with more expense. You should have de facto transparency and that that is the future of government and open government. So I was having fun with that. Oh, yeah. On like a theoretical basis. I hear you. I gave the, the author last night, um, Christopher Sanford, the, uh, a copy of my dad's book with a post-it note on the John F. Kennedy poem, Golden Eagle. He was, he was nice. He was in D.C. when Kennedy was president. And then basically my dad was in London right before Kennedy was president. So he's like totally like a political diplomat class brat, D.C. brat kind of a guy. Like a British D.C. brat. I was, at first I was puzzled at his muted muted british accent but when i realized oh he's only half british and he kind of grew up in the states that i was like okay you don't have to have a full-on british accent but it was um he was he was really uh cool yeah oh yeah yeah it's clear he's uh pretty much a kennedy worshiper who isn't these days <laughs> But I really got a better understanding of the Cuban Missile Crisis than I've ever got. And I've been, like, struggling over that one since I was, like, 10 years old. My dad used to talk about the Bay of Pigs and Castro and Cuban Missile. And I was just like, huh? I don't get it. What the hell are you talking about? But my dad would froth in the mouth about Bay of Pigs. And I still don't really get that. Even though I had a poli-sci teacher at PSU who kind of tried to explain it. He was so annoying, I could hardly pay attention. Both PSU, what do you expect? Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll love this. Uh, he said there were apartheid demos at Yale, though. He was a Yale boy. Oregon Sister Cities Association spoke this week at City Hall, right? Mm-hmm. Oshkelon Israel was one of the spokespeople that went, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's all this, like, total racism and sex scandals with the mayor and all that in the, you know, about the mayor of Oshkelon Israel, how he's... 
busted for like uh, sexual uh, assaults or harassment and um, bribery and fraud and stuff like that. You mentioned that yesterday, and I would look that up. How do you spell that? Ashkelon? Or A-S-K? Like Ash, and then K-E-L-O-N. L-O-N. Okay, Ashkelon. Okay. 